So with apologies to anyone who's ever owned a mountain bike, you will totally understand what I'm about to show you here. But what we're going to do here, because we're minge bags, is save this rubber boot so we don't need to fuck out in an entire upper arm for the sake of this guy. Now I'm pretty sure that if we were to hunt long enough and pray hard enough we'd have got one of these in time. However, all that's wrong with it is a tiny wee split here. And that split is all that's really toasted. So if it was totally ripped to pieces and whatnot, yeah, we wouldn't humour this idea. But with a small part of vulcanising glue, we can actually save this guy. So, if you, the reason I say if you've owned a mountain bike, you'll know this. This is basically a puncture repair kit for, for car parts. The first thing you want to do is make sure the part that you're doing the repair to is clean. Now, you wouldn't have this issue in a bike tyre because it lives within the actual tyre itself, so the rubber tube would always be clean. However, this has an amount of grease on it. So let's get rid of that. Word of <laughs> caution to anyone using brake cleaner, because I found this out the hard way. Try not to get it on your hands, because see when you get it on your hands, it evaporates quick. That's the whole nature of brake cleaner. It flushes out whatever the issue is, and then buggers off itself pretty damn quickly. So if you get it in your fingers, it washes every bit of oil, skin, moisture, and leaves your hand drier than a desert. So, try not to get it in your fingers because it, it doesn't look like it does much now and probably cleans them really well. But see, by the time you go home, you wonder why the skin's fallen off. It's because there's no moisture left. That is now supremely clean and dry and looking very, very rubbery. Next up, from a very well known uh, purchasing site online. Which uh, delivers very quickly. It's my primary choice for vulcanising glue. It's not mine, if I'm being honest. But the only reason I went there is because it came the next day. And as it is, we have enough parts to worry about showing up. So I'm just going to put a wee pop in that. I'm going to hold open the wound. This is quite medical, isn't it? The gash. The g <laughs> That's not. We're just going to run a good old bead of this in. Let it get right in amongst that crack. <laughs> <laughs> then leave it there to do its thing. So, according to the instructions, other than telling me it's flammable, Oh, it's filled in the UK. Huh. Comes from Barton upon Humber. I did not expect that. Right, we'll give this at least an hour to dry, because normally you can do a puncture repair within 15 minutes, but this is going to take a bit more punishment, and we've not exactly been slight on our application. And this is apt timing, because I have just finished pressing in the two upper bushes. Right, so I've flattened this guy down. I'll just put a wee punch in here to start it. That, more than anything, is going to be for the drill to get it through it, but seeing as how we're here anyway, I'm going to try and drift this out and just see if there's any chance this will have it. Wow, that's the dinner fall off. Lol. <laughs> I think the answer here is no. Now, that's cutting at least, there's plenty of sh** on the floor to testify to that. Yeah, it's coming. Aye. <laughs> Once this problem is resolved, we are... Out of problem debt. Yes, out of problem debt and into wheeling this bad boy under here. There is actually one more thing I need to put on that subframe, which is this guy. We'll get that done without a buzz gun. And erm... Um, We'll be golden. Do you want the gun? <laughs> It's starting to look more like where an engine should be, but we are still several foot away. 
So what I've done is we've added as much height as we can to the car, so it's up. We've shuffled with the space available. And we've got the engine more or less orientated, I think, to where it needs to be. A couple of points to consider here, though. We're going to start bringing this body down, so that we can then bring axle stands back under it and secure the body, and then bring the engine up to it. But there's still some things that can foul. Now, not the things that gave us issues on the way out, such as the steering shaft, that's out of the way, but things that we need to watch when orientating on the way back in. First of all, we've tied the torch tube out of the way using a block of wood and some cable ties. It's literally that advanced. That has stopped it straining and fouling on the gearbox when we push it in, but it's still going to get in the way when we start bringing the car back down. So we need to eyeball that on the way. Secondly, the gear stick selector itself is also going to have to fit in that hole. There's a very good chance we're bringing down if there's a slight orientation mismatch, that gear stick selector will hit the bodywork and you are going to have a bad day if it does that. We don't need that. We really don't. So this will be lower an inch, check everything. Lower an inch, check everything. On and on until we get it more or less sitting where we want to have it. It's in. It's in situ, where it's supposed to be. That, Yay. That actually wasn't as horrific as I thought. It, it was wasn't really. that bad, was it? It was a jiggly operation for sure. But um, yeah, and it goes. Unfortunately, we are far from finished. So even though we've got the engine uh, in, we've got more or less a few of the subframe bolts in. We still need to deal with the torque tube, still need to deal with the prop shaft, and the exhaust, and all the loom, and all the coolant, and all the Hello comrades, you join me from the BMW. I am on my merry way to the unit for another day of fun. So we are getting rid of the air conditioning. Why you may ask? It's not because race car, it's because the, the car which donated its engine to us very generously uh, doesn't have air conditioning and as a result the mounts in the block are completely corroded uh, and we can't get the bolts in. Had we addressed this on the floor we could have dealt with it but access is nigh on impossible like the air conditioning compressor has been squeezed in and the reality is it's a two-seater convertible in a country which is not known for its nice weather i can't imagine i'm going to need it very often there's no gas in it either so getting rid of it really isn't a huge loss um so we're going to delete the compressor which meant we needed another belt so i'm just on my way back from euro car parts this is a auxiliary drive belt for a car that doesn't have the aircon um, compressor in place so we're going to go get that in we need to fill the gearbox with oil we need to connect up all of the exhaust prop shaft coolant lines we need to do lots of stuff tommy linked me a really interesting video which was turbo yoda of mighty car mods fame um, talking about projects and what he made very clear is that Great fun, really exciting, creative outlet for folks like us who, who love our cars and, and love working on our cars, but you shouldn't do it as a, a sort of soul-searching answer to your mental health being in a, a, in a less than ideal state. It's a draining process. The first few weeks were pretty easy because we were just constantly moving forward, but now uh, it, it's, it's taken its toll for sure. Um, it's a challenging piece of work and I've, I've enjoyed it. I wouldn't I wouldn't say I, I, I regret doing it, but it's been a it's been a difficult piece of work. It's been a bloody expensive piece of work. Um, we'll probably do some sum total mass at the end, but the whole idea was I would buy a cheap engine, seven hundred and fifty pounds, which is good for an NC, um, and fix the car, and that would give me time to get to know it and figure out if I want to really invest my you know a lot of money and time in it. But unfortunately, due to the number of failed components we came across, such as the control arms. Uh, anti roll bar bushes, the drop links, brakes, tyres, just lots and lots of stuff. So the actual cost that started at 750 has now sailed past the £2,000 mark. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's not been a cheap endeavour um, in terms of cost or effort, but I'm sure it'll all be worth it when I can finally sit in the driver's seat and actually drive the car. I drove it home, took it out for a 20 minute drive and that's when I discovered the bearing failure issue. So I haven't actually drove the car other than bringing it home which was in the rain and dark. 
So um, yeah, off to the unit for another day. This is Bank Holiday Monday. The engine's in situ, the subframe's fully mounted. We will be starting that engine today. Yes, we'll take a bit of rain just now, so that when the sun comes, this wee weapon's ready to go. Yeah! Because look at it man, it is yeah, getting yeah. there. We've that should got... be a testament to the current state of affairs. Aye, triple checking the oil level. Yeah, so we put, well how much is left in this? Just over two litres, um, so we've got three litres in. We are not putting this in because we're ready to start. No. We're just, you know, it came to mind and we're like, let's just make sure that gets done the new. So, where we're at, ECU's in, belt's back on with its new, I well, can't even really see it now, the new proper uh, idler for it. Um, all the other fuel lines and governs is done. Um, I've left the battery out because we still need to do the steering shaft, which is a two-man job. But before we get to that, we, we are... We have... Motul, I've just noticed this. Why does it say Motul? Motul. Yes. Yeah. Um, we are now at the point of using this in concert with this because the gearbox needs oil. One penis enlargement pump addressed to Austin. Some, some loop. Yep. Why I'm doing this on the floor, I don't know. Yep. Do -do 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 -do. This is a fucking accident waiting to happen. <laughs> also, as we look at the back to come in future episodes, i.e. more rust death, but you know. Right. Oh mate, see when this is mounted, I'll be a happy chappy. I've just been dreading this for the minute we took it out. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna achieve this. Fucking roads! Fucking difficult! Aye aye. There's something you need to be aware of, Tommy. What? The wheel is upside down. Well, fucking straight, isn't it? I can't, the steering lock's engaged. Hold on. Fuck's sake! You see the problem with yours? The door can't open all the way because we've got a bench here. My fat ass is in the road of it. Yeah, so the door hits the bench. Um, and it's not perfect, but I like the door being intact. Now Tommy is quite significantly smaller than me, so he gets in here. Since Tommy took the piss out of me, um, how do you like his grunting? It's not quite pronounced as yours. No, mine's is like that of an elephant trying to squeeze through a post box. Aye, I know what these are from now. Aye. I'll deal with that if you if you. Do Fuck, it's fine. It's fucking my car anyway, isn't it? <laughs> oh no, 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 it's no. <laughs> I'll get no fucking benefit to this game whatsoever. Oh, yeah. Oh, and we thought I was getting in there. <laughs> Some of us hoped. Mate, you barely fit in. Putting me in that would be like putting a slug in a slot machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a boy! This has to be easily the most compromising position I've ever been in for tools and track. You alright in there, Tommy? I'm sure there's some challenge where you can actually drive a car like this. <laughs> just like, work the pedals with your hand, work the steering, and like, have mirrors in your toes. Right, I've put the door out against a piece of... There you go, nice and gently. There you go. Eee! That was an adventure. Some fucking guy. Here we find. Can't go hold off. Disconnecting spark plugs and coil packs, but don't worry, YouTube hasn't broke. You're not back at the start. You are at this start. We're almost ready. We're going to stick the battery in, we're going to crank it. 
um, to get oil flowing around the engine basically and then we're going to reconnect all of them crank it again and hopefully something will happen yeah so let them all out oh they are they're all out check that out man badass please man fans work the immobilizer's going back shit this might be the wrong key so we're about to go again only this time We've connected in the transponder for the mobilizer. <laughs> so that's interesting, the key that did do up before now works. Oh, Is that enough to get oil on it or should I crank it a wee bit more? The, were you showing an oil pressure light that was turned off? So the, oil, the engine oil light should turn off when you crank. It's not actually... Right, you want to reconnect the plugs? Yeah. And we'll get a handy injectors. See? See, good for... It runs. It does work. You don't look happy. Is it my car? <laughs> <laughs> I've said this from the start. Ah, yes, that's a relief. Good luck. Thanks, Rock. This is what this man's relieved face looks like. We've started the engine. It ran. We've even filled it with coolant. Um, it, it, it sounded good. Did have a wee scare at the start. It was a bit tappity when it first turned on. It wasn't bought men knock, which is great, but uh, we, we didn't want any untoward noises. Thankfully it cleared within a couple of seconds. It was obviously just oil getting to where it needs to go. We ran it for five minutes, um, and it's it's great. It, it's it's doing what it's supposed to do. We revved it a wee bit. There was no even so much as a hint of knock. Thank fuck. Now, after we square up this unit of doom, it is time for us to finish it. Indeed. Something's not right down there. You think? So we have reassembled this more or less to this point where it's like just chuck the arms back on. And uh, I was initially confused as to why that thread for the brake hose was on the opposite side from where it would be. But we carried on regardless and then we realised the hubs were going upside down. So, what did we learn? <laughs> Absolutely not. Clearly. <laughs> So what's going to happen now is, you and me are going to have a fucking race. Yeah, you know, I'm going to lose. No, it's a montage race. Right, okay. So you take a side, I'll take a side, and see if you can get it actually mounted with humps. Bear in mind, I've already loosely assembled, so you know where all the bolts go and everything. For the GTA 5 fans out there, there's a particular mission where Trevor and Ron have stole a plane from the Lost Biker Gang. And on the way back, Trevor says to Ron, if you beat me, I'm going to fucking kill you. And then Trevor wins anyway, of course he wins. <laughs> That's like this. Are you going to kill me if I beat you? No, no, it's all the way around. Oh. You are by default going to win this race. Right. Um, so you are Trevor. You're T. Yeah. Trevor's a nutcase. I'm a nutcase. Let's have a race. Thoughts? Good. It, it moves. I mean, the alignment's out by miles. We sort of expected that, to be honest. Um, as in, the steering wheel is like a taxi cab. Um, 
But yeah, it moves. There's rattles, but they're coming for the bolts that are in the fucking thingy compartment. Ah. This is not the end. We will be back with more, to be quite honest, maintenance fixes and little tweaks to get this thing ready for its first session around Knock Hill. We are going to go and set a benchmark with this guy stock. I say stock. As rude a health as a stock car can be. It's got tyres, got new brakes, blah blah blah. This will be the fence mark to see how much we can improve this. So stay tuned for that. And then, oh, eventually then it's turbo time. Until then, like, subscribe, hit the bell. If you've enjoyed it, that we don't know many people that know MX5s, so if you do, could you share it? That would be nice. Nobody seems to share our stuff at the moment. Patreon.com slash tools and track if you want to help more fantastic stuff like this. And until the next time, try safe.